Hi, I'm Pardo Lavage from Synergy Electrical Sales. Today I'm going to go over some quarter occupancy sensing basics. In this application, we want to make sure we have the proper sensor coverage so when someone walks in that quarter, lights go on immediately. So we got three choices for our technology for motion sensors. We can do ultrasonic, passive infrared, or dual technology. So let's, before you choose it, let's go over the options to understand what you're getting. So the ultrasonic, we have our ox sensor, and the way it senses motion is it puts out ultrasonic waves and it's waiting for a person to hit those waves and then they come back reflected differently than the sensor was expecting and that's how it senses motions. The good thing about ultrasonic is we can space those 60 feet on center. Now um, from projects that I'm on we're using ceiling sensors. Um, that's typically where the design team wants them, so that's just what I'm going to cover here um, in this. So we're talking about an ultrasonic ceiling sensor, one that, that looks like this. That's how it senses uh, from here. That's what we're talking about in that application, okay? So passive infrared, that'd be our other choice, our next choice. We have our occupancy sensor, and um, the way that it senses motion, and I cover this in detail in another video, but it's putting out passive, um, it's sensing heat body heat versus background heat. And what it's looking for is our person to move in a perpendicular direction with that. Great sensing technology, but the distance is shorter. You're probably gonna space those 20 feet on center in your application. Okay, so those are two choices. Now, a third choice, which uh, we wanna consider is actually putting both of those technologies together. And we don't wanna use dual tech in a quarter. And the reason is, Dual technology is meant for classrooms, offices, for sensing fine motion. So all the default settings for this dual tech sensor are designed for fine motion. So we want to choose one of the others. Before you choose though which sensor type is best for your quarter, we want to consider a few other things. All right, so again, we've got our two sensing technologies that we can choose, passive infrared or ultrasonic for our corridor. So before we choose which sensor, we want to consider some other things um, looking in that quarter overall. Things like advanced programming. So is there anything sophisticated that we want to do with our system before we choose the sensor? So scheduling. Do we want to enable or disable when that sensor is active? Um, nice feature, especially in office buildings, you can keep the sensors uh, essentially inactive during the day at night and make them active. So you want to consider that. And then also a nice advanced feature is we can have our light levels in a quarter go to 50% light level when occupied during the day off in the evening. So that's what you want to think about as well. And um, we also want to think about maintenance. Do we want, you know, something like a university, K through 12 school, they might have a facilities team, electricians that could handle a building automation system. Or is this something where maybe like an apartment building, you just want to have a simple user app. And the reason that I'm explaining it this way is that the, um, the modern, easy to use systems like the Lutron Vive system, which I work with a lot, has a simple user app that uses passive infrared. So if you want pass, if you want advanced programming, passive infrared might be that right choice for you. If you want simple, just on off, good motion sensing, ultrasonic would be your choice. All right, so now I'm just gonna show you the basic wiring structure of ultrasonic sensors in a long corridor. So I'm gonna show you how that's done here. So these are our sensors. We've got our, I said before, because they are ultrasonic, we can space them 60 feet on center. Okay. So that's gonna be our spacing for our sensor. All right, over here we have our power pack. Okay, uh, so that's actually what's going to turn our lights on and off. So let's just bring our, I'll show that here, our 277, could be 120 either, but 277, that's our load in, and that's our line out to our lights. So that's our lights. All right, we've got that part there. Now I'll show you how the sensors connect. So these are low voltage sensors, and we have three wires that come back to this power pack. So they're 24 volts, so our positive, we have our common, 
and then we have our signal wire that connect these. And again, those come all the way through to all these sensors. Now, again, if we needed to go beyond this distance, right, we have 60 feet on center, that would get us 180 feet. If we needed to go beyond that though, we can bring another power pack. And in this case, we're just gonna power the sensor, but not power the loads off of this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two of these wires. We're gonna take our common and our signal, and we're gonna connect those to the system. And then from here, we're gonna take our three wires out and our three wires to these sensors. So the key part is we're gonna, we're gonna need all three wires to power these sensors, but then we're just gonna take the common and the signal to bring it back here. So we have our power pack for our lights. Now we've got six sensors. So we've got six times 60 feet on center if we want, can bring us 360 feet motion sensing for a quarter. So that should take care of most of your applications. As always, thanks for watching. Put a message in comments if you have any questions.